is Gabe Zalna. I'd like to spend a few minutes and talk about some of the current events that are going on right now, specifically Benghazi. Uh, I saw on Fox News uh, this morning that a number of the senators and some of the congressmen, they're looking to uh, have uh, Ambassador Susan Rice uh, subpoenaed, and they'd like to question her specifically on what she knew and when she knew it. I personally believe that would be a total waste of time. And I believe what Obama said uh, is true. Very seldom does he say anything that I believe is true, but I think in this instance he did. And what he said is that they should leave her alone, they meaning McCain and some other senators, and if they want to pick on someone, pick on him. I think he's right. And once again, he's very seldom right. But they really should pick on him because he's ultimately the final authority. He's ultimately the one that had everything to gain and potentially everything to lose. If that information would have come out prior to the election, that might have swung it in the other direction. But then again, in second thought, that's probably not true either because uh, the Chicago machine, uh, under uh, the leadership of David Axelrod, uh, made certain that he wouldn't have to shave off his mustache, if you know what I mean. But I don't know if a sitting president can be subpoenaed and can be put under oath. Uh, if he can't, I think we're somewhat of a stalemate because nothing is going to come out of it. I mean, Obama said himself, uh, we will provide all the information that is available. That's interesting. All the information that is available. The key word there is available. Obviously, he's going to make certain that nothing's available. So if nothing's available, they're not going to provide any information. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. What I find utterly unbelievable is how this man can continue to play the game as well as he does. I mean, you'd almost think that he was a real statesman. You'd almost think that he was a real president when he's not a statesman and he's not a president. He's a complete fabrication. The problem is, I believe he's a fabrication of a system that was in place or an organization that was in place 25 years ago. Now, I don't think they started out with him. Uh, obviously, uh, I think what happened was they had a plan, and the plan is to do what they're doing to this country. And then somewhere in the very late 79, 80 period, guess what? He surfaced. And as good as they tried to bury his past, they couldn't bury all of his behaviors, like him belonging to the Low Down Club with Reverend Wright's Church, uh, or his association with uh, one Lawrence Sinclair. You know, they couldn't predict that. They had no way of predicting that. But they're doing a good job covering it up. Anyway, I don't know what will come out of Benghazi. I personally think it will go the same way as the, the Fast and Furious. Uh, it will get a little bit hot in the kitchen, and then once it's too hot in the kitchen, all he'll do is what he did with uh, Fast and Furious. He'll just exert executive privilege, and it will all be swept under the rug. That's really sinful. That's just one big problem that we have. The real problem that we have is we've got someone in the White House that's on a mission. And the mission that I believe he's on is a mission that he's already executed successfully in Egypt, in Libya, soon in Syria, soon in Jordan, and eventually, I think, in Saudi Arabia and the rest of the free world. If Obama is such a great ambassador and if he's so well tied in with Muslims because he lived in, in Indonesia for a number of years and when he was on that whirlwind tour of his in Cairo he said that he'd be the ideal candidate for the role of bringing unity and bringing these two factions, factions together. Well if he's that great of a, of a diplomat why doesn't he go over to uh, Israel and try to get that thing straightened out? He will never go to Israel. And, matter of fact, I'd be willing to bet a whole lot that he will never go to Israel. Now, he might go to Jerusalem when Jerusalem becomes the capital of Egypt, if that ever happens, but that's the only way he'll ever go to Jerusalem. And anyone that thinks otherwise is kidding themselves. No different than he'd not ever be able to take Michelle to any Muslim country, because he is a Muslim and she's not a Muslim. So, if anyone believes that he's not hell-bent on converting whatever's left of this country when he's finished with it to uh, 
follow Sharia law, you're fooling yourselves. And you congressmen, you have a lot to be not thanked for. You have a lot to be despised for because you allowed all this to happen. He never should have been allowed to run for office. And the real culprits behind all this, well, Nancy Pelosi and one Harry Reid. You both vetted him. You need to be put under oath, which you can be, and ask, how could you have vetted someone that you knew nothing about? God help America.